Hello, and welcome once again to Chamber Momentum. My name is Mo Bellavo, and I'm the Executive Director of the Greater East Hampton Chamber of Commerce. And I am happy to have a conversation today with Justin Pelis, who is the owner of North Country Landscapes. Yes. And we'll be having a great conversation with him and getting to know him a little bit better today. So welcome. Thank you, Mo. And thank you for coming out today. So let's just get started. So maybe you could tell us again who you are. Sure what you do, where you do it. Uh, my name is Justin Pelis, uh, and uh, I am a partner of uh, North Country Landscapes and Garden Center, and Garden Center. And we're out of West Hampton, Mass. Uh, we're basically a full service landscape contractor and also a garden retail. Okay, and how long have you been doing this? Did you think you just said? Owned, we've owned the landscape business. I have a partner, Tim Kortowski, mm -hmm. um, and we've owned the landscape business for 10 years now. Nice, yep. nice. And how about the, um, the garden the center? The garden center is a little bit newer. We've uh, started that about six and a half years ago. Great, now I can recall um, prior to the six years of your starting over there, uh, that little building up there in West Hampton, yep. and you've done a great job with the, uh, the building itself yeah. and the curb appeal and it's very inviting. It's a lot of work. Um, when we bought that property uh, about beautiful. eight years ago now, uh, it was an old general store yeah. uh, and it's basically concrete block walls and a lot of dirt. And yeah. So over the last five years we've been, you know, every year we put a new phase into it and uh, kind of expanded the facility. but. When I first moved in, there was nothing there, and I tried to rent it out, and it was just no one wanted it. Right. And put the money and energy into it, so I, I started converting it into a garden center. It's beautiful. And uh, the grounds, were basically briars and and uh, you know trees growing in right. it. So so put a lot of work, and there's still a lot of work to to do, but we'll get there. Right. So now you mentioned you have a, a partner. Correct. Tim. Yep. And so do you split? The, the duties of uh, Tim, the garden center so, and the landscape? How does that work for you guys? So it's funny, Tim and I, we, we didn't know each other growing up. We mm -hmm. both went to, we both grew up in Northampton, but we didn't meet each other until later on in college because he went to private school, I mm -hmm. went to public. Mm -hmm. And for a summer internship, we worked for a, a, a Steve Roberts doing Highland Landscape in Springfield area. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think our second year there, I, I asked him if he wanted to you know, start a business with me. Nice. I said, I'm going off my own. Um, I need someone to help me. Would you be willing to uh, you know, join me? So uh, he did, and, and that summer, uh, 10 years ago, we uh, went off on our own. Okay. And, uh, but it wasn't until then that I know Tim. But as far as duties go, he's uh, more of a uh, foreman on the job. Okay. And I'm more of the administrative side of things. I you know, okay. get the jobs, do the estimates, yep. meet with the clients, uh, line up the work, and Tim kind of runs the crews and, and the jobs. Okay. So. so let's talk about a typical day. I, I want to talk about the garden center too, but let's Correct. let's start that's with that's the landscaping piece. Yep. So like a typical day for you, you yep. um, do you do, do you get involved with the with the designing? Correct. Of yeah, your, the, of your, I, of I, so well, typical day is you know I, I meet with the crews in the morning. We get there at seven. Uh, you know, we have our, our work lined up for the day and mm -hmm. each one has their, you know, their orders and uh, w they break off and then from there on, you know, typically I would meet with people, mm -hmm. customers, potential customers, ongoing jobs to make sure everything's going well. Mm -hmm. uh, and within that, there would be design work um, that we do. We do full design, um, CAD programs. Mm -hmm. And you um, do that in-house? And we do that in-house. Nice. Um, you know, typically... Uh, you know, we may only do a dozen a year, mm -hmm. but um, you know that'll fill my right. My, you know, my well, schedule. We, but you don't have a 12-month season. Yeah, correct. Right. So I, I like to actually, preferably, hold those till the you know winter time, where I can line up all right. my design work for the winter, and then keep me busy during the winter. Right. Um, so now, what does that? What does? Um, what is? Are your offerings for the landscape part of your? Um, I, when I was doing yep. some research, you have quite a long list of the things sure, that you sure. provide so for your Sure, so it's funny, when, when Tim and I first started, we were solely construction. Stone mm -hmm. walls, patios, walkways, fire pits, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stonework. So that was basically what we started as. I love stonework. And um, as we grew our client base, we had more requests to do you know, full service, such as mowing, fall mm -hmm. cleanup, spring cleanup, mulching, edging. Mm -hmm. And now with the garden center, you know, it's, it's very complimentary. People come in, they realize we do all the services that we, we have mm -hmm. to offer. 
uh, we expanded it to you know uh, you know greater mulching and mm -hmm. more mowing and now we do a lot of commercial projects um, maintenance packages mm -hmm. um, full full season mm -hmm. uh, so you do winter maintenance we also? do winter plowing mm -hmm. um, we, we try to focus on the uh, commercial side of plowing mm -hmm. just because it's you know once you get into the driveways it's tough to mm -hmm. focus on the bigger lots and uh, so so we we really focus uh, primarily on the commercial plowing and maintenance mm -hmm. uh, but yeah I think we do basically everything but uh, irrigation at this point mm -hmm. and uh, this year uh, coming 2016 we we're going to be looking into gate getting into irrigation oh okay so um, it's just another lately it hasn't been a huge demand for irrigation right especially the Northampton with their bands and right uh, so a lot of our customers don't even request it mm -hmm. but um, you know simple enough to add so do you find I just had this random thought in my head about um, you talking about water restrictions and that sort of thing which mm -hmm. led me to think about the changing weather patterns and stuff does that affect your um, design work and is it um, is it as is it as a dr as drastic a, a change that I feel that's here or is that just my um, perception of that do you know what I mean I think I think you know I think basically people are more into the low maintenance now <laughs> and clients yeah. they, they they don't want to water their lawn right one, they don't want to pay for it. You right. know, Northampton charges for water in and water out, so it gets a little bit more expensive. You got the the hill towns, which they're on wells, so they might not be able to irrigate right. effectively with their their wells. So really, they're just trying to use what they have right. and make the best of it. So, you know, low maintenance natives are very popular native plant material. Right, that's what I was getting at. The um, so things that don't need to be watered as frequently as uh, you know more exotics and annuals and things like that. Right. Um, dealing with uh, things that already exist in nature that mm -hmm. really adapt to you know dry periods or mm -hmm. wet periods, mm -hmm. and that would be the or you know, pests or this exactly. Or that. So we we see a you know a larger demand through the garden center for uh, native plantings, mm -hmm. um, uh, pollinating pollinators such as mm -hmm. uh, you know the, the flowering uh, monardas and mm -hmm. bee balms, and mm -hmm. they, they want to attract the bees and butterflies. And right. So, um, but yeah, as far as um, adapting our landscapes I think you know they've always been there it's just people are going back to it mm -hmm. you know okay. using what they already have right. or what exists around them right right so. so now so you basically you know graduated from school and you knew this is what you wanted to do and you just went right into it or how did that evolve no, for I, you uh, <laughs> So I have a finance degree from UMass. Oh, okay. I ended up, well, that's very helpful when you're in, in business Boston. for yourself. Yeah. I ended up in Boston as an internal auditor for Liberty Mutual. Okay. And uh, Big difference. <laughs> I, I hated the corporate world. Right. I didn't like being in the office. Mm -hmm. I spent more time in the you know, Boston Common mm -hmm. than I did in my own office. Did a lot of <laughs> traveling, which was nice, but um, again, it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. I realized that. So I ended up uh, going back to school at the Stockbridge program at UMass. How long were you in the corporate? Uh, a little over a year. Okay. Well, okay. Well, I didn't give it much time. No, well, you don't. But well, it was when you know, for me. when you know, you know. Exactly. So you don't, you know, you don't need to get. Yeah. Drunk so uh, you know, I, I wanted to go back to school, and I, I was really impassioned by um, architecture, landscape architecture, um, uh, horticulture. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to do more with that. And so I went back to the Stockbridge program at UMass, which is a phenomenal program. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I did that for two years. And, and I guess during our last season, in our first year as a business, we were approached by a gentleman who owned North Country Landscapes. Oh, okay for 30 years prior to us buying oh, it. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry, so I didn't realize that there was a yeah. long heritage before you. So we bought North Country. Nice. Uh, That's and, awesome. Uh, it was smaller then. It was just one individual, mm -hmm. and maybe another guy. But we took that business and expanded it. It went from you know solely construction to now the full service that it is today. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, it's it's been a long ten years, but a good ten years. Good for you. Yeah. That's yeah. exciting. I have a, kind of a quirky question about um, horticulture and that sort of thing. Do you get involved at all with? Um, Permaculture design, um, or again, there's not so much. There's not a huge request for permaculture. I mean, perm permaculture is a system. You know, yep. it's it's a balanced system yep. that works on itself. And yeah, there's customers out there that, you know, 
<laughs> have a theory of what they want, but it's not right. necessarily true permaculture. It might right. be just a raised garden bed with some, um, you know. You know, um, I'm talking about like the whole plot exactly. layout, a lot zones of, and all that a stuff. A lot of people don't have the uh, patience and or just the, the, um, the time you know, to I, maintain I love the variants. thought of permaculture. I love the thought of, and if those of you who don't know what permaculture is, it's, it's basically growing your own food yeah. in a natural system so you have symbiotic plantings and fruits and vegetables growing at together. All times, yeah. At all exactly. times. And you're growing your own food. So, exactly. But the thing that, you know, I like, it's not that I need to have everything neat and orderly, but permaculture to me just seems like it's very natural. Random. It's naturalistic. It, it very. doesn't fit everyone's property. <laughs> it seems that's very for sure. like tropical, you know. Yes. Yeah. Most downtown East Stanton properties yeah. aren't going to have a permaculture garden in the right. front yard. It's just not big enough and, and not really, it's just not sustainable. You okay. Know, um, you, you need, you know, space and land. Yeah. And, um, but there's people that are, you know, getting into it. It's just they're not, you know. Yeah. Well, anything that's kind of. Um, off the beaten path, which I think yeah. that is, but off the beaten path, it takes time for people to sure. kind of yeah, like warm I up tell, to that I thing. I can tell people, start start off slow, get an apple tree, two, get two mm -hmm. apple trees, get some blueberry bushes. Um, you know, start off slow. You don't have to start right. with the whole ecosystem right, right. away. Right, right. And, uh, and it's much more manageable for people and right. not as overwhelming. Right. So, so do you do, um, do you get involved with, um, like, say, outdoor living spaces, like the outdoor kitchen type thing? And yeah, th th we do, you know, because of our stonework, we do a lot of patios and uh, sitting walls and fire pits. Mm. Uh, the outdoor kitchens have been uh, in higher demand lately. I it love seems them. like people, especially when the economy was bad, people wanted to spend more time right. in their backyards and less time traveling. Right. Um, it's still the case. I don't see it as much as maybe a few years ago. Really? But people are still doing uh, outdoor kitchens and... My fantasy is a, a brick oven. Yeah. Which, again, I mean, those are phenomenal. Um, not necessarily cheap. No. But, um, but I mean, you could buy a kit. Over time, money saving costs and pizza, I'm thinking to myself. Or like True. a rotisserie, you know, thing going on in True. there. Can you do that? We can. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's... People, people are, are really going from purely an aesthetic look in their landscape. Yeah. It's going from aesthetic to more functional. So yeah. they want to actually spend the, uh, That's what I'm talking about. more time, uh, whether it's uh, birding right. or beekeeping or growing their own fr uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, so they really want more of an experience out of their landscape yep. than just the aesthetic. You know, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, it was all aesthetic. It was right. the, the foundation plantings right. and the trimmed, sheared hedges. And so the landscapes, you know, less of that now and yeah. more of the, you know, the experience. Nice, so. nice. So um, now that we've kind of uh, covered the base of, of the what it is that you, that you do from day to day, you and your partner, Tim, mm -hmm. um, what do you feel that is your, and I guess it might be kind of a difficult question because you have two separate, not separate, but two different components to your business. Mm -hmm. What is your greatest business challenge? Honestly? Yeah. Employees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, just you know, you, we're we're dealing with young guys. You know, they're, they're young guys who are in transition. They're going from either high school, college, college to real life. They're they're trying to make a living. They don't know exactly if this is what they want to do, or right. do they um, stay and try to develop a career? Mm -hmm. um, they, if they're in college, then they're dealing with their, you know, the stress of college. Mm -hmm. uh, or the distraction of college. The distraction <laughs> of college. Um, so you know, every day is different. You never know what to expect. When you're dealing with you know young individuals, right. and, how big of a crew do you have? Uh, Midsummer, we had about twelve. Okay. Uh, two in the garden center, and then uh, twelve in the landscape side, including myself. Mm -hmm. uh, as we get towards this time of year, because of um, you know fall and education, they uh, our staff is a little bit lower. Right. So we're probably about eight or nine right now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the challenge is just being trying to motivate young individuals and and trying to coach them and direct them and help them as much as you can, uh, right. give them some direction as to where they want to go. Right. So. All righty. Very good. Um, so what, um, you know, you get up every morning and you, and you seem very excited about what you do. Um, you're committed to what you do. Um, what is your, do you, do you have a basic underlying philosophy of how you um, carry through the day and how that ties into what you do and how yeah. you do it? Basically, the way I see 
business and in life is you treat people, whether it's a customer, an employee, mm -hmm. um, or a vendor, wherever it may be, uh, you treat them as you want to be treated yourself. Mm -hmm. The golden and, rule. And that's how I live my life and my business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, whenever it comes to, you know, a, a decision or w whether it's, you know, ethics or, you know, would I do that? Would I want that person to do that to me? Or right. how? So basically, I try to treat everyone uh, as fairly as possible. And mm -hmm. uh, um, that's, that's how I run my business. Do you have a particular design philosophy that you Design kind of philosophy. Keep, yeah, um, as you work through your landscapes. Yeah, you know, I, I'm... You know, I like to create space. So, mm -hmm. you know, this room has four walls, mm -hmm. right? And a roof and a, ce a ceiling and a mm -hmm. floor. Mm -hmm. So when I design, I like to create space. You know, you, 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 that's basically how we're taught. Um, so, you know, you use plant material for your walls. You can use a canopy of a tree for your ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I, when I design a landscape, Basically, I use that principle. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have some kind of cozy, nurturing areas of the of the, exactly. of the landscape, you, or then maybe perhaps it, some open. It, it puts perspective and scale into bringing into you, an drawing you, and exactly. In. So, so when you when you create space effectively, you know, you as the the individual being in that space, you know, you you have a sense of feeling and. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you uh, just more of an experience than if you were like in an open field. Mm -hmm. or, so that's basically how we, we design. Every, every landscape's different. Every mm -hmm. you know, um, concept is different. Mm -hmm. When um, you're at home, do you spend a lot of time outside in your yard? Or you do not. <laughs> you, you hide do not away in your, in your living room? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I try not to. Right? Um, it's funny. You know, seven days a week, typically, at right? the, uh, between the landscape and the garden center. So it's... Uh, very little time to spend, uh, right. but I do love going to other parks and uh, spaces and, and seeing what other people do. Mm -hmm. Because what uh, was a, a, a maybe an, a public space that you have visited that really kind of blew your mind, as far as um, you know, in, in in correspondence to what you do. Public space recently, yeah. I would say the High Line. Um, I don't know if anyone's been to the High Line, but it's no? a uh, they took an old. Uh, Run, I guess, run down abandoned uh, railway, mm -hmm. um, an upper railway in, in Manhattan. Okay. And they converted it into. I've uh, been there actually. Okay. They converted it into uh, basically a public garden. It's very cool. And so it's just a very inspirational story and uh, how uh, they took something that would otherwise be demolished. Right. And, or mundane and tedious. Exactly, and created a public space for right. you know people to experience in in the city. Right. How about you know we were just talking a little earlier before we started filming that um, you've done some travel abroad. Mm -hmm. it ha is there a, a particular country or mm. city abroad that kind of inspires you as well? Well, I haven't. I, I can't say there's one particular thing that uh, sticks out. Space-wise, garden-wise, um, you know, old-school Europe is is a different philosophy, more manicured mm -hmm. and uh, a lot more maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you still got the old stonework, but there's more, you know, very classical mm -hmm. approaches. A lot of hedges and mm -hmm. alleys, and which are beautiful, mm -hmm. um, but uh, completely different style than than our area. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's it's I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but it's uh, it's definitely uh, inspiring to see you know that other side of the world and and, and see what they basically have been doing for you know thousands Millennia. of years really. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? So. Um, ha, do you is it often that um, a client might say to you, or do you incorporate? Um, pieces of, of artwork. Um, mm -hmm. Do you work with any area artists that perhaps? I, I can't say. Is that like a crazy question? No, no. Sure. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of art in this area, and there's yeah, a lot there of is. artists. So, uh, it's not rare to build a space around an art piece. Okay. So, we may, you know, we have. That clients. to me seems like it might be yeah. a little uh, of a challenge, a little bit of a challenge, and yeah. yet intriguing. And and we have a lot of clients that are artists too. So they're they're always, uh, you know. Not necessarily, Can that be a challenge for you? Yeah, not necessarily <laughs> sculptists, or, or you know, but we have, uh, uh, for instance, uh, well, we do use Sam Ostroff a lot for railings, and uh, he, he's done a lot of the metal works for 
um, downtown Northampton and the, the okay. you know the truck eating bridge and okay uh, oh cool uh, so we, we do the work truck eating we, bridge. we do work with local artists but a lot of our clients are artists and and at times we have to build spaces around their artwork I just which had this is crazy fun. thought too do you ever get involved with like a topiary uh, we have the problem with topiaries are unless you maintain them on a regular basis right. they they go from being a nice right to you know, wild to you know something right. that's undefined so. Right. So maintenance is the key. Yeah. So uh, I have two, I'm going to kind of blend two questions here together. What do you think is your key to your success? And follow up with that. Um, if there was any one piece of advice you might give to a starting, budding entrepreneur. I would say do not give up. <laughs> yeah, that's a common thing it's, when I talk uh, to people. It's just, you know, owning a business is not easy. And you're dealing with a lot of different factors. Mm -hmm. um, and the more you get into it and the bigger you become, the more you realize it's the less control you have. Mm -hmm. And is the more hard? you rely on other people. Is that hard? Um, is that hard no, for you to let go? No, it's not hard to ago? let go of control. It's just, it's, you really depend on a lot of people, your employees, your vendors, your, mm -hmm. I mean, so it's, it's like really you, and you have to make these people realize they're important. Right. And I think as you grow, um, one, don't give up, but two, don't, forget to make these people know that they're important and right. that you need them and right. um, they, that you couldn't do it without them. Right. I think people appreciate that yeah. more than anything, you know, how, if you can define to them or express to them how they are, you, you, the integral part that they are mm -hmm. to the to the team, and that's why, that tends to be yeah. my, my most favorite word is the whole team thing. Yeah. You know, not any one of us is doing any one thing by ourselves. You know, I certainly don't sure. in my capacity at the chamber. I have a yeah. legion of folks that work with me on a volunteer basis, which is really, you know, yeah. fortunate for me. I'm a lot of talented people. So yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. So. Yeah. So if, if um, is there anything that we didn't cover? Oh, you know what I'd like to know is where can we find you? Mm -hmm. Um, physically and online, mm -hmm. both um, um, the landscaping portion and the garden center. So basically, um, we have a shop, a garden center, mm -hmm. uh, and our landscape offices are all together. How about the hours? Uh, basically, nine to four every day. Uh, seven days a week? Seven days a week. Uh, sometimes that changes depending on the time of year. Uh, okay. Uh, soon we'll be doing Christmas trees and holiday sales. Oh, nice. So our, our hours will be That's extended, but overall it's nine to four. Okay. Um, and uh, so basically I'm, I'm there okay. for the most part. And, and we can find you on Facebook? Facebook, yeah. Online is www.nocolandscapes.com uh, no okay. or northcountrygarden.com. Okay, and your phone number? 413, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm only, oh, 413-527-7250. Yep. Yep. Okay, great. I'll leave the cell phone out. Please. Yeah. <laughs> you would be thankful if you did. Have, you know, there has to be a cutoff someplace. Not everybody needs to find Everyone you out 24-7. cell phone number. Um, so is there anything that we haven't covered together here today that, or any one thing that... I don't think so. You know what? I, I just, I just want to say that I, I, I truly enjoy you know part of business is just part of being part of the community mm -hmm. and being involved right and it's nice to you know go to an event locally and seeing a client mm -hmm. uh, or friends mm -hmm. uh, partake in those events so so it's nice to be not only a business owner in the community but also just part of you know the community itself well, it and, goes back to we we are communal yeah. beings and um, we again you know it doesn't happen on a, you know, by ourselves on a rock. So that's what island. motivates me. You know, it's it's really just being nice. a part of this this great community, whether it's Northampton, East Hampton, um, and uh, you really build a great network of friends, mm -hmm. and uh, it's good. Great. Is there any one thing that we may not know about Justin Pelis that you mm. might want to share? I don't think so. I don't know. No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Justin. All right. Thank you, Mom. Thank you for being with Appreciate me today. It. Thank you, folks, for joining us again. I'd like to thank East Hampton Media for all of they, uh, what they do for us. Until we see you again, ciao for now.